Hello, my name is Qin Yi. I'm going to present Prague High Performance Heterogeneity Aware Asynchronous Decentralized Training. This work was done at the University of Southern California. In this talk, I will first give a brief background introduction on machine learning and distributed training. Then I will discuss two existing algorithms that have prominent strengths and weaknesses. The open question is, can we get the best of both worlds? Uh, to answer that, we propose Prague. I will explain the key ideas and show promising experiment results, and finally conclude the talk. Now let's begin. Uh, machine learning is the technique to extract knowledge from data. It has many real-world applications and continues to have increasing impact on our everyday lives. However, in order to obtain useful, accurate models, people usually need to spend a long time on training, uh, sometimes even up to days or weeks. This is because the amount of data needed for training is massive, and also the models are increasingly complex. In order to complete training in acceptable time frames, distributed training is widely adopted in industry and an active field of research. There are many approaches to distributed training, for example, data parallelism, model parallelism, and hybrid parallelism. In this work, we use data parallelism, which is a preferable choice due to its high throughput and also the focus of many machine learning frameworks. In DP, different workers work on different data and synchronize with each other. As the scale of training becomes larger, more and more workers are involved, and it, it is increasingly important and challenging for workers to synchronize timely. Uh, the traditional way of synchronization is via parameter servers, where in each iteration gradients computed by all the workers are accumulated at central nodes called parameter servers, PS. Uh, the problem with PS is that communication bottleneck easily happens at the central nodes. Um, to deal with this problem, the popular approach nowadays is to leverage low latency or reduce operations to replace PS. Communication is scheduled in a delicate pipeline way to better utilize the band network bandwidth. Uh, recently, decentralized training has also gained considerable attention. Uh, like all reduce, it does not have uh, does not have central nodes. The difference is that decentralized training is more flexible with configurable communication graphs and peer-to-peer -peer model averaging. One of the main challenges in distributed training is the straggler problem, uh, also called heterogeneity. It happens when some workers are slower than others, either because the worker itself is slow or a network link is slow. Uh, stragglers can be deterministic. For example, a worker machine can have low compute capacity or network link can have limited bandwidth. They can also be random due to factors like uh, resource sharing, background OS activities, caching, power limits, and so on. To demonstrate the effect of heterogeneity, here is a figure taken from Chen and others 2016 work that has received over 300 citations. citations. Uh, the authors track the time to collect the gradients of one variable from 100 workers. The x-axis is time in seconds, and y-axis is the fraction of iterations in which k gradients are received within the time t. For example, if we draw a line t equal to 2, then we can see that within 2 seconds, we can collect 50 gradients in almost all of the iterations tested. But in only around 30% of the iterations can we receive all 100 iter uh, gradients. What's more interesting is the variation across iterations, which shows the effect of random heterogeneity. To collect a total of 100 gradients, the time needed can fluctuate a lot. In fact, according to the paper, the longest time observed was 130 seconds. Uh, when random heterogeneity like this occurs, the performance of synchronous algorithms, like already used, will be limited by the slowest worker, because all workers are required to participate in the synchronization. This is far from ideal. To deal with stragglers, the solution is asynchronous training, which means not all of the workers need to participate in the not all of the work need to participate in the synchronization. Um, if we think about how random slowdown can happen, a natural way to look at asynchronous training is that, from a worker's perspective, for example, W three, uh, there is a probability that it will synchronize with another worker. In line with this, there is a recently proposed decentralized algorithm, ADPSGD, that adopts randomized communication and can tolerate stragglers exceptionally well. Here is the overview of the ADPSGD algorithm. Each worker maintains its own version of the model, and the communication pattern is specified using a graph. 
so two workers only communicate if they are neighbors in the graph. In the picture here, we show an auto all graph. For certain, uh, for each worker, an iteration has three steps. Uh, here we use W3 again as an example. In step one, it computes gradients and applies gradients locally. This is a local gradient descent step. In step two, it chooses a neighbor at random, in this case W1. And in the last step, uh, they perform an atomic model averaging. Um, so both X1 and X3 will be modified atomically. Atomicity requires that if two workers happen to select the same worker, the two synchronizations must be serialized. This can be achieved by appropriate locking mechanisms. Let's look at how ADPSGD performs compared with Oreduce. We implemented both algorithms on TensorFlow. Uh, in the figure, we show their performance in homogeneous environment and heterogeneous environment. To model heterogeneity, we injected five times random slowdown. That is, in each iteration, a worker has a probability of one over the total number of workers to slow down five times. The y-axis is the total time needed to reach convergence. Lower bars are better. The results show that all reduce is greatly affected by random slowdown. While ADPSGD is barely affected, um, uh, it, uh, the performance is not as good as all reduce when there are no stragglers. This is due to the heavy synchronization cost incurred by atomic model averaging. Therefore, the open question is, can we design an algorithm that can perform as well as or reduce in homogeneous environment and still tolerate stragglers well, like ADPSGD? So in the next part, I will talk about the insights we got from ADPSGD, which motivated the design of Prague. Here we look at a case where W0 uh, selects W3 to perform synchronization. The computation W0 is to first compute and apply gradients, and then average its model with W3. The model averaging step can be expressed as a matrix W. Here, after computing x equal to x times W, we have x0 and x3 equal to half x0 plus half x3. x1, x2, and x4 remain unchanged. So what if W4 also wants to synchronize with W3? We have the actions at W0 on the left and actions at W4 on the right. Since model averaging must be atomic, the, conflicting, the two conflicting synchronizations must be serialized. The resulting operations can also be expressed as a matrix. So here comes the key idea. Instead of performing two synchronizations one after the other, why don't we perform one joint synchronization of the three workers? This can significantly shorten the execution time. But then, since the two synchronizations could have happened in any order, it is not intuitive why the three models receive different ways in the joint operation. So, a better way would be, uh, why not we just perform one model averaging over the three workers? Uh, therefore, we have gone from synchronization between two random pairs of workers to synchronization among a random group of workers. And if we have more conflicting pairs, we may want to perform a joint reduce over more workers. We term this new merged operation partial or reduce or p-reduce since it is essentially an or reduce operation among a subset of workers. Mm -hmm. It is important to note that although the numbers in the matrix have changed, convergence is still guaranteed. Uh, please refer to our paper for more details. So next, we will talk about system design to enable partial or reduce. The system design is illustrated in the picture. Instead of letting workers choose neighbors at random, there is a group generator, or GG, that generates groups for them. Uh, there's also a group buffer for each worker at the GG that stores upcoming groups for the workers. In each iteration, a worker's actions are as follows. First, to compute and apply gradients locally. Then, it contacts GG to obtain its group. Uh, this can be executed in parallel with step one to hide the latency of the communication. Finally, it performs p-reduce with the group members. Uh, here, p-reduce is implemented as a collective operation, meaning that it will only be executed when all the group members are in step three. When the worker contacts GG, GG will check the worker's group effort to see if it has already been assigned groups. Uh, if not, it will generate a new group. If so, it will, gener it will return the first group in the group effort. Uh, to see this in action, let's go back to our previous example when both W0 and W4 
want to uh, synchronize with W3. Uh, first, W0 contacts GG, and since its group buffer is empty, uh, GG randomly generates a new group, 034. GG puts this group into W3's buffer, buffer and W4's buffer, and sends the group to W0. Now W0 will enter step 3, but the actual reduce operation will not begin. Uh, we we'll only begin when every group member has entered step 3. Uh, after that, W4 also contacts GG. Since its group buffer is not empty, GG will take the group 034 out of the buffer and send it to W4. Uh, then W4 also enters step 3. Uh, so the reduce operation will happen when W3 also gets the group from GG and enters step 3. We can see that we have retained the essence of ADPSGD, which is randomized communication, uh, but we improved over ADPSGD by enabling synchronization among small groups of workers. Another big advantage of our design is that it does not take complex locking mechanisms to ensure atomicity, which further decreases the synchronization overhead. But the challenge remains that group, group generation strategies are needed to ensure good performance. Uh, for example, we do not want groups to overlap since overlapping groups are still need to be uh, uh, still need to be serialized. So to avoid conflict among groups, a simple but ex extreme idea is to inform a uh, enforce a fixed schedule that doesn't have any conflict. We call this static GG, but since it is static, we can imagine that you won't be able to tolerate stragglers, but it can still give us inspiration. Uh, a good schedule that we found by trial and error is shown in the table. We have 16 workers running on four nodes, shown by the circles. Uh, the schedule alternates between two phases. One is an interface where workers in different nodes synchronize uh, see the yellow groups and the pink group. The other is an intraphase where all workers in the same node synchronize with each other. The schedule repeats itself every four iterations. Uh, as for a random schedule, we uh, Propose group division when the worker requests a group from GG instead of generating just one random group, GG will generate a random division that is to randomly divide all workers into non conflicting groups. Uh, the reason behind this is that when groups are generated individually in a conflict free way, it can easily lead to division bias where some workers are always grouped together. To see how GG works, let's go back to our previous example of five workers. Uh, when GD randomly generates the group 0, 3, 4, you may also generate an up group 1, 2. And next time, GG may generate groups 0, 2, and 1, 3, 4. Uh, to further improve the quality of group generation, uh, we draw inspiration from the static schedule above and devise a new rule that is to alternate between an interface and an interface. We call this inter intra synchronization. For instance, in our five worker example, uh, let's assume that the five workers reside in two physical nodes as shown in the picture. Initially, the buffers are all empty. When one of the workers requests a group on GG, GG will generate two group divisions, uh, one for the interface and the other for the interface. In the interface, in every node, there is one worker that participates in an internal group. In the interface, all workers in the same node uh, synchronize together. After the first two phases have been completed uh, by the workers, the GG will generate another two GGs again. Um, this time, the groups are a little different from before. Uh, they can be different since there is a random there is randomness in the group generation. Now that we have got high quality groups by enforcing rules during group generation, a problem also arises. The reduced randomness can lower the system's tolerance towards struggles. Uh, to deal with this problem, we designed a threshold group. Uh, since GG can count how many times a worker has requested a group, we can keep track of every worker's progress. The threshold group basically states that still workers are not considered in group generation if a normal worker is requesting a group. This is to limit the negative effect of the slow workers. But when the slow work when a slow worker itself gen requests a group, uh, GG will generate group divisions uh, as usual, uh, so as to give slow workers a chance to catch up in case they are no longer slow. Now we have seen all the key ingredients of our prog system, 
In the next part, I will talk about implementation and evaluation. We implemented our system as customized operators of TensorFlow. Uh, for peer reduce, we used the NicoS backend to leverage uh, state-of-the-art reduce operations. We implemented GG using the gRPC Python package. Two versions of Prague are implemented. One is static GG uh, with manually designed group schedules, and the other is smart GG with all the proposed optimizations. We also implemented two baseline algorithms on TensorFlow, or reduce and ADPSGD. For all reduce, we used the horrible with the nickel backend. For ADPSGD, we used the locking mechanisms to ensure atomicity and remote variable access to implement peer-to-peer -peer model averaging. We tested our design on various computer vision models and one NLP model. The experiments were conducted on TACC supercomputer. Uh, all the models were run using 16 workers on four GTX nodes with one worker per GPU. Uh, for ResNet 50 on ImageNet, we also ran 32 workers on eight GTX news, nodes. Um, to model heterogeneity, we injected artificial slowdown. Uh, for every worker in every iteration, there's a probability of slowing down, and the probability is computed as one over the total number of workers. Uh, so on um, in, uh, in expectation, at any time, there will be one uh, slow worker. But of course, there can be more since it, it, the, the slowdown is probabilistic. In the results, we first show the speed up with respect to the throughput. Mm -hmm. The speed ups are normalized to our reduce without slowdown. Uh, the highest speed up in each setting is marked in green. We can see that without slowdown, Prague can can achieve similar or better performance compared to all reduce. With slowdown, smart GG can greatly outperform all reduce. Um, due to limited time, we did not test algorithms on all the models with all the settings. The result on the transformer model is especially exciting. Even without artificial slowdown, smart GG achieved four times speed up compared to all reduce. We argue that this is because the transformer model is more of a communication bound application compared to CNNs, so it can benefit more from our optimizations. Next, we compare the time for the different algorithms to reach the same loss value. The speed up here is again normalized to uh, or reduced without slowdown. Higher bars indicate better speed ups. The blue, orange, and gray bars show the speed up in execution time when no uh, slowdown is injected, two times slowdown is injected, and five times slowdown is injected, respectively. We can see that both all reduce and static GG are greatly affected by the slowdown. ATPS GD is very resilient to the slowdown, but the heavy synchronization overhead prevents it from achieving ideal performance. In all three settings, Smart GG has the best performance. Finally, we demonstrate that Prague can achieve similar accuracy compared to all reduce. When running ResNet 15 on ImageNet using 16 workers, Prague and all reduce achieved similar final accuracies. For the transformer model, we were only able to uh, conduct a five-hour fixed-time experiment, and Prague achieved higher blue score than all reduce in the end. Um, uh, within five hours, the reference blue score is 27. In conclusion, we propose Prague a high-performance heterogeneity aware asynchronous decentralized training approach. Uh, we propose a novel communication primitive randomized partial or reduce um, that can enable fast synchronization among group of workers and we design smart group generation strategies to further improve the import performance. Prank achieves similar or better performance compared to all reduce in homogeneous environment and has high tolerance towards stragglers, achieving the best of both worlds. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to take any questions.